I'm here with comic books artist Kanan White, the artist for the Uber books. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Very relaxed. Um, this is my first convention probably in about six years. So um, it's this is kind of new because I haven't been one this size. But um, all in all, man, it's pretty, pretty relaxed. Uh, Kieran's making me feel at home, and you know the Avatar crew has been really good to me. So yeah, it's um, I enjoy it. So it's going good. How did you first get interested in drawing comics? Well, see, I grew up in the 90s era, so I grew up watching Jim Lee's, the Jim Lee's, the Silvestri's, you know, Michael Turner's, so, um, and when Image hit, you know, it was that big boom, it was something different. I mean, he had kind of, before they were doing the newsprint thing, and then with Image, you know, they brought, like, the glossy paper and the larger-than-life colors and teams out the wazoo, so it was just like, oh, my gosh, so... Seeing that, man, it was just like inspired me to really want to, you know, perfect it. I mean, I've always kind of been in the comics, even from since being young, but, you know, seeing it coming up in that era, man, it kind of, you know, inspired me more to just really, you know, make that a career choice. I knew I was going to do this at 14, so, you know, <laughs> so. That's a good way to start right at the beginning. Yes, yes, most definitely, man. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple, man, just doing it. You know, for the love of you know, for the love of the art. You know, it's it's cool, it's cool to to be able to make a living off of it, but I do it for the passion too. So I mean, the love of the love of the art. So yeah, yeah. Were there any inspirations for your art while you were starting off? Yes, I was saying, like I said uh, earlier, um, all the image image guys, Magnificent Seven. You know, predominantly Jim Lee, even Rob Liefeld. No, <laughs> Rob Liefeld. Um, you know, all of, you know, Brigade, all the stuff that I said, all the 90s, man, when ho comics were really at their, you know, their, their zenith. Um, that's kind of what I came up watching. So early X-Men, when it was just Uncanny X-Men, they didn't have all the other ones. You know, um, you know Wall Wallace P Pistachio, I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong. Um, the guy did Wet Works, you know, uh, like I said, Michael Turner, um, it's Mark Silvestri, you know, all that. So, yeah, those... Those three, and then as of as of late, probably about two or three years ago, um, maybe a little longer. So I get into Alex Ross, Brent Anderson, the guy that did um, was it um, the Astro City? I think it was kind of like retro superheroes. Um, and then Rogs Morales. I saw Infinite Crisis, man. That I didn't need the Crisis, and that, that blew my mind. You know, I never thought about using actors as your reference, which is what he did. So. Um, yeah, though, then uh, John Cassidy, um, uh, Brian Hitch, you know, kind of more of the rendered style. So, you know, there's a little bit of everything, man. It's kind of a melting pot, and, you know, in the midst of that, it's my style. So, yeah. So, yeah. Being uh, picked up for uh, as the artist for Uber uh, is, pro is one of your bigger uh, yes. roles uh, since uh, you started. How was it getting that uh, gig right off the bat? Pretty, pretty impressive, man, and, and nope. humbling. Nope. You know, um, I've been doing this since 2004, okay. and um, I think in 2006 I did some stuff for Dabble Brothers um, when they did the little merger with Marvel. And you know, as you know, Dabble Brothers did a lot of um, novel to fantasy or fantasy novel to graphic novel stuff. So I did a book that was kind of a like a prequel to a story that Monty Cook wrote, um, the guy that wrote all D and D games. Mm -hmm. Um, Patalis, which was a board game, and they wanted a graphic novel to just kind of coincide with it. So, <clears throat> did that, man, and it was a learning experience, man. But um, you, you learn a lot, you know, what not to do, what to do. And then after that, um, still was doing some stuff with Dabble Brothers. And then just started submitting, and I fit the story. You know, I, I've come to know that sometimes it's not so much just the art, but if it fits the story and. You know, Kieran liked my work, so Kieran Gillian liked my work. So I mean, I was I was a privilege, but I don't think anybody thought it was going to be what it is. I mean, it's you know people are going nuts. You know, in spite of the subject matter, and you know it, it's because it's not just a book about Nazis. You know, it's so much more. And uh, once you read it, you figure it out. Um, Kieran Gillian did a lot of research, a lot of thought and depth on the story and characters and all that. So yeah, I mean, it's it's an honor, man. I mean, to be even. At a convention with him, I mean, he's he's a cool guy, you know, amazing, you know, helping me along the way. You know, it's my first monthly title, so um, you know, it's definitely a learning experience. But you know, I'm 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 just taking it all in, man. So yeah.
Being your first monthly title, how has it been keeping up the pace of the having to put out art uh, on a, a regular basis? It's, 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 it's gotten better. You know, it's, it was hit and miss earlier because you know, see, you never, you know, a monthly title, man. I mean, you know, it's not just like having one in the can. You got you know, like three or four ahead. So, I mean, you're always like trying to keep a, a consistent, you know, development and flow. You know, and even if you waver just a little bit, you know that that next issue can catch up on you. So, um, but it's it's, a, it's been it's been pretty good as of late. You know, so and just r really trying to stick with that mold and keep producing, man. You know, so, yeah. How did you keep with the stylistics of the 1940s Germany for the book? A lot of references, whole lot of references. Um, and you know, Karen Gillian was pretty descriptive as far as what he wanted, and. Um, but I mean, he kept, he gave me liberty, you know, like the, the, the look and the feel of the, the Uber uniforms, but still, you know, was, I went and did a lot of research as far as like, you know, kind of the Nazi clothing, lots of leather, you know, kind of that sleek kind of feel, but still make it industrialized and strong and, you know, for, for the Ubers because of their size, you know, they're, they're battleships. So, I mean, they're like, you know, they, they're the heavy arms, so they, they can't have just, you know, your typical leather jacket and boots like a, you know, German soldier. It's, it's got to still be somewhat superhero iconic and look look soldierized. So, um, but, yeah, a lot of references, a lot of references, man. Airplanes, you know, all the tech, even as far as, you know, glasses and the, the type of pliers that we use, you know, for that time period. Because I want to really make people feel like they're in the 40s, you know, the end of 1945, you know, end of World War. So, um, and I think that, that right there engages the audience and keeps them keeps them in you know focused in, in what you're doing. So yeah. Can you give us a little hint of what can we could seeing from your design aspects and the future issues? As far as like the look of the characters or yeah, the, the some like maybe some uh, particular pages that you're proud of that you're working on. Oh, okay. Um, lots of spreads. There's a lot like in the issue six. Um, there's some pretty epic scenes, man. Where uh, you know Kieran goes over um, battles that took place and like on the ocean and I think around the Okinawa or whatever, um, Japan. So you see a lot of like aerial battles and, you know, ships or you know, airplanes attacking, you know, fighters and battleships and carriers. So a lot of detail. Um, some other things that I can't divulge that will be awesome as far as like the Ubers, you know, and, and, and Ubers on the sea. But yeah, um, those six probably by far is kind of like the step in the direction that I want to go with the style. I mean, there was a huge gap between issue zero and one because I did issue zero and then it was like a three or four year gap before I could get back to issue one because I was doing some other stuff for Avatar. So once we got back to issue one, the style changed. And then, you know, it just kind of progressed from issue two to three to four. I mean, you'll actually see kind of like a an increase. And so by the time you get to issue six, um, it's a lot cleaner, a lot crisp. Still a lot of detail, man, but a lot of, um, yeah, capturing a lot of the detail and the feel of, you know, that time period. And, you know, especially when doing the battleships, a lot of detail on the, on the aircraft carriers, or not aircraft carrier, but the battleships, um, explosions, you know, the water, you know, all that. So, I mean, it, it all matters. You know, like somebody told me, it's like the background is just as important as the characters in the story. So, you know, to truly sell the setting, you got to be as accurate as possible. So, yep. uh, now that Uber has been a step in the right direction for you as an artist, uh, have you been getting any uh, other books been interested in making you be a part of it? Um, not as of yet. Um, still, to, like I said, technically focused on Uber. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I do a lot of like, well, I say a lot, but try to do commissions and stuff. So I get to do a lot of the mainstream characters for other people, and you know, people are you know they're starting to notice you know a little bit more of my style because um, you know when you do it when you have it inked sometimes it looks different than you know the fi the final project looks different than the pencils mm -hmm. and um but um yeah so i mean right now you know uber is predominantly you know my focus you know like i said being monthly title man i don't want to take on too much mm -hmm. you know and get overwhelmed and you know then the book falls behind and stuff so but um I'm, I'm looking forward, man, you know, as, as I get more finished issues, man, you know, if it gets the attention of people, you know, some of the other people, you know, maybe Big Two or whatever, cool, but right now, man, I'm, I'm happy here. You know, it's, um, 
like I said, Kieran's good, man. I love the workflow. I love the Uber, the Avatar team. Um, William Christensen, he's a, you know he's an amazing editor, and uh, keeps keeps you on point, man. So yeah, I appreciate you know the opportunity to work with them. So not looking to move anywhere anytime soon. If I did have a a wish book, yeah, it would be Superman, and that's just a personal passion because. I'm a fanboy, big time. So I'm looking forward to the movie being hot. So, but um, other than that, man, um, I'm cool. You know, I'm content with with where I am right now. Not settling. I'm always wanting to progress and get better. But you know, I'm happy where I am. So, yeah. And that's good. It's it's a good book. Uh, I've started reading. It's Thank I've been enjoying it. it your artwork, especially, Thank and uh, I hope that the book uh, rises to new heights as it pr progresses. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. I mean, I appreciate all the support. Like I said, we, uh, Karen put a lot of detail and information and a lot of research in it. And uh, you know, like a lot of people don't realize, it's not just a book about Nazis. It's a book about humanity. Mm -hmm. You know, and how. You know, in the darkest moments, man, you still have people that rise to the occasion, even when you know it's hopeless. You're still willing to fight for that maybe chance that maybe possibly we can win. And um, and then you also notice that as strong as these battleships are, they're not, they're no more, no less pawns than everybody else. So they're just being used just like everybody else. You know, so um, yeah, it's 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 an amazing book. I, I love it. I enjoy it. Uh, I, you know, when I'm drawing, man, I, I purposely don't read ahead because when I get to those oh snap, oh my gosh moments, I want to capture that, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, every when I'm when I when you see it, and you're like, oh my gosh, that's how I felt when I saw it, so or when I read it. So, you know, I try not to read ahead, man, just to keep it fresh. So, yeah. Has it been hard at drawing some of the more graphic scenes? Yeah. <laughs> Originally, man, it was it was difficult. Um, not something that I, I'm used to doing. But that was kind of a prerequisite of really getting on that title to be able to show war violence. And um, so, like anything, you know, you do your research, man. And for me, I wanted to be accurate. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to go look at Private Ryan. And I mean, that was probably as graphic as a film as you can get. You know, a guy picking up his arm, you know, and people getting cut down by gunfire and stuff like that, blowing up. So I want to be accurate. So even, even when... You know, you have an Uber, you know, knock somebody's head off or, you know, tear somebody in half. You know, I wanted to show, I mean, what would that look like? You know, it's not going to look like torn pieces of paper. I mean, it's going to be like, you know, skin being pulled away and torn away. You, you got to sell it. Mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, you know, if an Uber punches you through the chest and he's twice your size, you know, he's not going to just put, punch a hole through you. I mean, he's going to have, you know, entrails and kidneys and all that, you know, because... Basically, you think of an Uber, it's Superman without the moral value, mm -hmm. the moral compass. And if you told Superman just like, if he just went nuts in this convention and started destroying human beings, I mean, it's going to be a, a bloodbath, you know. So, I mean, that's pretty much what the Ubers, you know, they're just doing what they're, they're, doing what they're told to do. And um, they're not, they're told to not give any re recourse to what they do. You know, it's just, um, what am I trying to say, cannon fodder and, uh, you know, casualties of war. So, yeah, it was it was difficult at first, man. But none understanding that it's war violence helped. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not gore for the sake of gore. Mm -hmm. And you have books like that. But, you know, this is definitely not one of it. It just, it's, just makes sense. I mean, if the guy is 300 pounds and hits like a nuclear missile, you're going to have it's going to be messy. So. Well, thank you for talking to us, and I, I hope you enjoy it, your time here at the Phoenix Comic Con. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yep. Thank you.